Hi, I've had a few people contact me recently asking various questions. So the first question was, how do you make a basic shape card and apply a dash line? And somebody else wanted to know how you make nested shape sizes. I have covered these things in previous videos, but in this video I thought I'd do a back to basics. So if you have been using your scan and cut machine for some time, then this video may not help you at all. But if you're a new scan and cut user and you're new to canvas, then this video hopefully will help you. So if you wanted to make a card that was five inches tall by four inches wide, the first thing you would need to do is come over to your basic shapes, choose a rectangle. While the rectangle is selected, choose your properties box. This box here, maintain aspect ratio, is normally selected by default. So untick that, which means you can now alter the height and the width independently. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the height of the card five inches. So I'm going to keep pressing the plus button and take it up to five inches. And then on the width, I'm going to make this eight. Now again, you can use the plus or you can highlight and type in eight and hit return. So we now have a rectangle on the screen that is eight inches wide by five inches high. And when this is folded in half, that will give you a five by four card. Okay, so with your rectangle selected, we're going to come to the properties box. And by default, any shape that you put onto your scan and cut canvas mat has a default setting of both a cut and a draw line, which if you were just going to cut this just as a basic shape, wouldn't matter. I wanted to write a greeting on the front of your card. When you bring this design to the machine and go to select draw to write your greeting on the front of your card, it will not only select your, your text, it will select this card because this card shape is set as both a cut and a draw line. I hope that makes sense, but hopefully it will as I carry on. So the first thing we're going to do is assign this as a cut line only. So we're going to click the set the second option under line type. OK, so that's what we're going to do there. I'm going to leave the properties box open for now. Now we're going to put a dash line down the middle of this card so that you don't have to use a bone folder or a scoreboard. This is optional. Again, it's preference. Some people like to use the dash lines. Some people don't. I use them on some projects, but on most I don't. So you come over here to the path icon and select it. And what we're going to do, we're going to click left click once just above this line here. Doesn't matter where, roughly in the middle, but we're going to center it in a few minutes anyway. So we're going to left click once and let go of our mouse. Then we're going to hold the shift key down on the keyboard and then without clicking the mouse, we're just going to drag the mouse down. And by holding the shift key down, you can see I'm moving my cursor, but that line isn't moving anywhere other, other than being perfectly straight. So now I'm going to double click to anchor that line. Once you've double clicked to anchor it, it automatically selects it. Now we want this to be a cut dashed line, a fold line. So what we're going to do, we're going to come over here and choose cut line again. This time we're going, to, we're going to come down to the dashed pattern options and choose one of the dashed options. I'm just going to choose this one directly under this solid line here. Now that has assigned that line to be a dash line and we've already assigned this rectangle to be a cut line. So now I'm going to left click up here somewhere on the page and drag an imaginary box around both. I'm going to come to edit and I'm going to come to align vertical and then edit align center and that will put that dash line directly in the middle of that card. While it's all selected, I'm going to go right click and hit group. You can also come to edit and group here as well. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So that is now one group. That's the basis of a card. Now, as I said, you may want to put some text on it. So what we'll do, we'll come over to the text icon. 
and we'll just choose a font that's already in here. You can use other fonts that are on your computer now by using the Brother Scan and Cut Font Converter and I've done lots of other um, vi videos on that recently. So we'll choose a font. Um, I'll go for this one. And when you select it, it brings the word text up onto your page. I'm going to double click next to this T to get the flashing cursor and using the backspace on my keyboard, I'm just going to backspace to get rid of that text. And I'm just going to type happy birthday. And then I'm going to select it and I'm going to drag in the handles and I'm going to reduce the size of it. Now I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it. So with this word selected, I'm going to come back to the properties box. And then this time I'm going to make that a drawing line because we want to write this with a pen or you may want to write this with a pen. So if you assign it a draw line, that makes it easier once you get the design into your machine. And then I'm going to close the box down. I'm going to go to view, fit to map to bring it back into view. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come back to the properties box and I'm just going to fill it with black just to make it easier to see on the screen. You don't have to do this at all. I'm just doing it as a visual thing. So you may want to put your greeting down in the bottom right there. What I would do again now, I would select everything, right click and make it all a group. And then that way, when you bring this into your machine, you can move this around your page to place it on your card accordingly. As you can see here, I've extended my dash line above the rectangle line. And again, that's just personal preference. You don't have to do it, but I find sometimes when you're trying to get hold of the dash line or you're trying to move something around, it's easier if it extends above and then it's easier to get hold of. But you must make sure that any, any lines like this that go beyond your design stay within this red bounding box here. So if I position this up in the top corner and just zoom up, you can see that although this line extends beyond my card, it's still within the red bounding box. And that's important for when you come to save the design because if it's outside like this, then you'll get a message saying that open paths are extending beyond the cutting area or something like that. So that's your basic card. You may decide that you want to add some embellishments. So we'll just keep this simple and I'll go to the basic shapes. So let's choose a star, a simple star shape. I'm going to just size it down. And then this could be, you know, an embellishment on the front of your card. You may want to make some smaller ones. So you could right click and duplicate and then you could size them down, make a few of them. OK, so you may want to make some offset or inset layers for your design to make your embellishment. So I'm just going to move those two out of the way. With the star, I found anything like this with points, it can have a different effect on whether you choose to do an offset line or an inset line. So I would play around with this. Now, if I come back to edit and come to the offset icon and take the spacing down to as small as it will go, which is 0 0.04 and put it on outward, make it bevel because they've got points. We don't want rounded points and say, OK, and drag the star off. I'm not so sure whether you can see this, I'll try and zoom in, but the points have gone blunt. So I'm going to select that and delete it and I'm going to come back to the star and I'll try and keep zoomed in for this. I'm going to come back to edit, come to the offset icon, take it down again as small as it will go. This time I'm going to choose inward and say OK. And this time you can see that the points are perfect. So sometimes you have to do an outset line and sometimes it's better to do an inset line. And that really all depends on the size of the design that you're starting off with and also to a degree the shape of the design. So if I want to create another inset on this now, while this is selected, I'll go to edit, offset, take the spacing down, make sure everything's still the same, inward and bevel and say OK. And that's given me another perfect star. 
So if I just fill these with colour, just so you can see them on the screen, I'll make this one red. I'll make this one a pink. And I'll make this one green. And then I'm going to layer them all up and you can see they will all mat and layer with the perfect spacing all the way around them. So let's go back to view and fit to map. So now I would separate all these so that they can be cut individually. So I'm going to put those all there. You could choose to cut them in different colours of card, whatever you want to do. And again, I'm going to select all these stars, just the stars, nothing else. And I'm going to come to the properties box and I'm going to make them all cut lines and close that box down. And this is purely and simply because if you put all these designs on your 12 by 12 mat at your machine to cut everything in one go, if you click cut, it will only choose the items that have defined been defined as a cut line and then when you click draw it will only choose the items that are defined as a draw line so in this particular instance it will just choose the words for you okay so the next thing you would do now once you've got your cutting shapes and things all positioned within this red bounding box on your mat you would come up here and give your project a name mine's already saved because i've had to record this video in sections because i'm busy so it's here, it's called Back to Basics, so I'm just going to re-save it again, which is this second icon along. So you just type whatever name you want in there, and then hit the save. Wait for the software to work, and that's that blue and black line that you can see there, and say OK. And then you need to download it. Now there are a couple of ways you can do it. I don't have the Wi-Fi version, so if you do, you can use your Wi-Fi transfer that you would use for any other cutting file. The way I do mine, I work on a Mac, I just click the big download button and then I get this next window up and I click this first option, download to PC and once I click that you'll see that file then just automatically jumps into my downloads folder on my Mac which you can't quite see, it's just off, off the screen at the moment. Now another way to do it, um, if you're on Windows as well, you, you, you probably have a downloads folder and you'll just do exactly the same thing and it'll drop into your downloads folder if you don't know where your downloads folder is just go to I think it's your start menu that's generally kind of in the bottom left hand corner of your screen and there'll probably be a search box there and just type in downloads folder and it should tell you where it is and you should be able to follow the um, properties of, of where it is but another way to do it so you know where you're going to put the file is when you get to this box here, if you, on your mouse, if you right click, you'll then get these options. And if you scroll down to this fourth option, which is download link file as, and I think these are all in the same order, irrespective of whether you use Windows or a Mac. But on the right click, you should get this little box that pops up. So you want the download linked file as. Then left click on that and it should open up another window for you that you're used to seeing on your computer when you're saving files. Now as you can see on mine already it says save as because we did download link file as. It's given it the name which is what I'd named it in Canvas. And then on the left here I've got all different places where I can put it. I'm choosing desktop which is the default setting here but if yours isn't, you'll, as I say you'll have something similar on Windows, just find your desktop, select desktop so that you know that this file then is going to be downloaded to your desktop and that way you'll know where it is and click save. Now mine has popped onto my desktop and it's here so I can close that down now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug a USB stick into my computer and then I'm going to show you how to put this file on your USB stick this way. But what you could also do, which I'll show you in a few minutes, is have the USB stick plugged in already. And then hopefully from 
download instead of putting it on the desktop you can put it straight on the usb stick so there's various ways to save your files and that just isn't with scan and cut that's anything that you do on your computer so i've just plugged a usb stick into the back of my mac and hopefully in a minute it will appear on my desktop yeah and there it is i'll just drag it in because it's just off screen so this is my usb stick and i've named it scan and cut 2 because i keep all my scan and cut files on my computer but i also back them up onto usb sticks so i've got one called scan and cut 1 one called scan and cut 2 etc so this is the usb stick now so what i'm going to do i'm going to double click on that and that will open the usb stick with all the folders that i've got in there with all my cutting files in now for this video i'm not going to put it in a file i'm just going to drag it onto the stick but you could you know if it was um a vinyl project you could drag it into the vinyl project if it was a word but you could put it in there so i'm just going to drag that and drop it into this usb stick and there it is it puts it in alphabetical order for me so it's up here now just as a single cutting file so now i'm just going to close that and then as you can see i've still got the original cutting file that's on my desktop and i've got my usb stick now normally what i would do i would open up all my documents find my scan and cut folder and then i'd drag that into there and that then I've got a copy of it on my computer and a copy of it on my USB stick. But I'll just go back to Canvas here now and show you how you can download it directly to a USB stick. So again, I'm going to click the download button. Come back to this icon here. Instead of clicking download and letting it just drop into my folder, I'm going to do the right click. Use download link file as. And then this time down in here now under devices i've got the usb stick which wasn't there before so if i double click on that that brings up that usb stick with all those folders and then what i could do then is just drag and drop this now i won't do it because i've already got one in and it'll tell me it already exists well that's just another way to do it if your usb stick is already plugged into your machine so the next thing that you need to do is obviously take the USB stick out of your machine. Now, you must never just pull the USB stick out of your machine. You have to actually eject it or close it down properly. And again, there's a couple of ways of doing it. If I just come back to where my USB stick is here, you'll have the same on your windows. I have this little triangle and a rectangle underneath it. And if I click on that, that will allow me to eject the USB stick. That's one way. Alternatively, with the USB stick on my desktop, I can right click and choose eject and then select that. And once the USB stick disappears, sometimes you'll get a message saying safe to eject. It, it depends what what. Um, system you're working on so I can now plug the USB stick out of back out of the back of my Mac and I can take that with all my files on it to the machine and then the next thing I'm going to do is load it into the machine and show you how you can just select specific elements of this particular cutting file that we've just made in scan and cut canvas that has all these different elements you may not want to cut them all together so I'm going to show you how you can just cut specifics so in this part of the video I'm going to show you how you can retrieve the design from the USB stick that I've just created in scan and cut canvas I'm not going to actually cut this project but I'm just going to show you I'm going to walk you through the steps so to save a little bit of time I've just put a piece of white card on my mat and I've put two pieces of pink card in different shades. And this is what I would do if I was going to cut this and make this project all in one go. I would load the mat up like this. As I say, I'll walk you through the steps, but I'm not actually going to make the project because I'm not in need of a card at the moment. So that's the mat. It's got three pieces of card on it, all similar thickness and quality. 
I've put the USB stick in the side of the machine and I've switched it on. I'm going to go to pattern, saved data and I saved it onto a USB stick in canvas so I'm going to go to the USB stick. Now I've got my um, projects all in folders on my USB stick and that's why they're showing up here but if you remember the last one I just dragged onto the stick so I'm going to just hit the up arrow which will take me to the last page because that's the last project I did and there it is back to basics that's what I called it. So on here now I've got the card with the dash line I've got the written greeting and I've got those stars I created in different sizes. So what I'm going to do that's that's the project so for now I'm just going to say OK and that puts it onto my virtual mat now on my machine. I'm going to open the machine, put the mat into the machine making sure it goes into the grooves on either side and I always hold mine in the middle on the big blue arrow and while I'm holding that I hit the load button and that takes it into the machine every time. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to choose the background scan icon, which is this blue icon here. And I'm going to select that and I'm going to say OK. And I'm just going to move the machine just so the mat doesn't hit my lamp on the table at the back. Okay, so I'm not sure whether you can see that now. I will try and zoom in. But basically, it's showing me the card and the stars and it's showing me my white piece of card and my coloured cards. If you can't see your designs very well, go into the settings and you can change the background colour. I've got mine on light because the last project I did on this machine was on some dark card. So I'm going to change it to the dark background and say OK. And then it brings up the colours more vibrant so you can see them better. So if I were to want to cut this project now, I would just make sure that this card is on the white piece of card here, which is this piece of card. And because we grouped this in Scan and Cut Canvas, I can move this anywhere now and it will all move together, including the greeting. And then if I wanted to cut, say, this, the bigger stars in different coloured card, I would just drag them on to the pieces and then what you can do if you go into this top left hand corner icon which has a square triangle and circle you can then come to the zoom button and you can even zoom into 200% if you want but I can see that I that this card is placed on that white or this card shape is placed on that white piece of card and I can scroll down and I can make sure that all these stars are all in the right place. And then once I'm happy that I've got everything lined up on all the bits of cards, I would say OK, OK and OK again. And then from here now, you can choose whether to cut or draw. Now, when we assigned the draw lines and the cut lines in Scan and Cut Canvas, this is where you need them here. So now, if I just click on the word draw, the only thing that should stay highlighted on this page is the happy birthday greeting I made in Canvas because that's the only thing I assigned a draw line to. So if I go to draw and wait for it to process, you'll see now that the only thing on here is happy birthday. I will try and zoom in for you. And then if I go to cut, the things that should show up are everything except the happy birthday. So if you were going to do this all in one go, I would, you, it doesn't matter which order, you, which order you do it in, you can draw first and then cut, or you can cut first and draw. I normally tend to do the drawing first, so if I was going to do this project now, all on this mat as it is, I would click draw, I would put the pen tool in the machine, and let the machine write that happy birthday. When it's finished, I would then go to cut and I'd put the blade in and I'd cut everything and that's the project done in one go. 
Now, there's an alternative way of doing it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back to the home button and by clicking this home button, I won't lose any of this design because it's, it's saying to me, okay, to delete all patterns. That doesn't mean that you're going to delete everything off your USB stick. It just means you're deleting the patterns that are on this virtual mat at the moment. So I'm going to say, okay. So now let's just say that you might, you might have saved this project and then in a few weeks or a few months or whenever you just might want some some stars cutting and you know that you've already got the stars in a saved project i mean stars are probably not a good um example for me to use because obviously there are stars within the basic shapes in in the pattern section but you know if there was something on on this particular file that you wanted to use in a future date let's say so go to patterns back to save data to the USB stick because that's where everything is. I'm going to go up to page eight because I know that's where the last this project is and I'm going to say OK. So let's just say you don't want the cards, but you might but you might want the stars. So we'll say OK and get it onto the mat. So this is what you do. You select the item that you don't want. And then you come over here to this top left icon and you hit the rubbish bin and it will ask you, is it OK to delete the selected data? And you say yes. Now, again, you've not deleted that card from the USB stick. You've just deleted it from this virtual mat. So then now, if you just wanted to cut the stars, so you'd say if everything that's left is all that you want to cut, you know, just the stars, you say OK, and then you can do the same thing. So what we'll do, I'll remove the white piece of card and let's just say that I'm just going to cut these stars for another project. So we'll go to the background scan, start the machine. And once you've done your background scan, you can then drag your stars on to wherever you want to cut them. And then you'd say OK, you'd say cut and the machine would then cut those stars from these two pieces of card down here. Now, just to show you that the project's not been lost, I'm going to go back to the home button. I'm going to say, yes, it's OK to delete all the patterns. I'm going to come back into the patterns, back to the save data, back to the USB stick and back to the last page, find the back to basics and there it is again with the card and the greeting and all the stars. So that's how if you've got multiple elements saved on a mat that you've put together either in canvas or on, on your machine previously, but you don't necessarily want to cut them all, that's what you do. You just select the bits that you want to get rid of, go into this icon here, hit the rubbish bin, say OK, and then you can cut what's left. But as I say, you've not deleted them from the USB stick, you've only deleted them from that particular mat at that time, if that makes sense. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments box directly below this video, either on YouTube or on my blog, because there's always an accompanying blog post with every video I have on YouTube. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.